Welcome back to Bone of the Week. This time I'll be talking about the axis. The axis is the second cervical vertebra, articulating with the atlas in front and the third cervical vertebra in the back. Due to being the second cervical vertebra, it is sometimes referred to as C2. The atlas is also rarely called the vertebra dentata or the epistrophias, although I've never heard it be called that and I'm not sure in what context it would be called that. Along with the atlas, it is the only individual vertebra to get a special name, and it functions to allow for greater head movement, which is important for feeding and the general use of sensory organs for land vertebrates, such as this fox. To do this, the axis has a bony projection coming out of the front called the odontoid process, or the dens. This process is partially derived from the centrum of the atlas, which has instead fused to the axis. The odontoid process is inserted into the atlas and acts as a swivel, or axis, for the atlas and skull. The axis primarily allows the head to move side to side, while the atlas is used for up and down motion. Furthermore, the axis possesses a cylindrical body and a centrum, like the more typical neck vertebrae. Although amphibians have an atlas, they do not have an axis due to the atlas being their only cervical vertebra. In reptiles and birds, like this monitor lizard here, the axis doesn't appear significantly different from the other cervicals other than the presence of the odontate process. The mammalian axis, however, differs from the other cervicals due to its relatively large spinous process and small transverse processes. Thanks for watching my second bone of the week. I'm still trying to figure out a better way to conclude these videos. Anyways, let me know if you have any feedback, and don't forget to like and subscribe, I guess. Bye.